Hello again everybody. Today I am covering a couple of tools that I use for cutting or trimming larger videos. I often end up recording much more content than I need and I want to clip it out, cut it up into pieces that I want to use then in a video project, but ultimately would rather use a purpose-built tool that is specifically designed for this task. I also have situations where I'll record a video, let's say of something my daughter's done on my phone, and part of it is great and I want to keep it, but the rest of it not so much. A traditional video editor is fine for this, but it also requires a little bit of overhead. I'll get into some of the reasons why I prefer these tools for these tasks specifically. But before before I get into that, a video cutting tool, like I said, it's purpose built. So it's very streamlined and specific to the task of cutting videos. And so you basically just get a timeline and some tools to set your markers and cut things. And, and I'll demonstrate that with the two that I am going to show today. But basically it's, it's just a quick way to do something that sometimes takes a lot longer than you'd expect in a traditional video editor. So when you have editors like Olive, Caden Live, Shotcut, and a number of other options available, why would you want to use a tool like this? Well, those editors will typically take files from multiple sources, so different types of files, it can be video files, images, audio, and the expectation is you're bringing all of these possibly disparate, you know, different types into a single project. The expectation is that once you've completed all of your editing, that you will then render out a new file. And so the rendering part is what can take a long time. And also the tool set of video editors, editing clips isn't always as easy as maybe let's say these tools make it. And so for me, sometimes it's just easier to use a tool like this, get the pieces that I want out of a video, and then have those to bring into a traditional video editor. So that rendering part I mentioned, that's a big part of this as well. So let's say I have a video that's 20 minutes long and I just want a few pieces of it. If I take that into a video editor and then cut it up and you know put it the way I want it to be, I then have to render that out. And if it's a, let's say a 10 minute video when I'm done, that usually on my system will take somewhere between like six and eight minutes to render. And that's fine. I mean, it's not a huge deal. But the difference between that and the video cutting tools is that they will reuse the same formats and containers. They're not re-encoding anything. So the mechanism of actually combining the clips that you've made, it can very quickly just put them together and output a like file and it literally takes a number of seconds versus the many minutes that it may take. And if it's a longer video, that's gonna take even longer. I'll show that as well when I demonstrate these applications. The two in particular that I use on a regular basis are AVI DMUX and Lossless Cut. AVI DMUX has been around for quite a while and it is a free editor designed for simple cutting, filtering, and encoding tasks. It has a little more utility than just simply cutting videos. You can actually use it to convert a video from one format to another as well. And then as they mentioned, filtering. So you can also add some filtering effects and things like that. So it has some editing capabilities, but it's really simple as you'll see. It's available for Linux, PC, BSD, Mac OS, and Windows. The latest Linux version is 274, released last year. It's installable on Linux as a native package in many distros, so you can just apt-get AVI DMUX, or it's also an app image that you can download and run. Lossless Cut is a little bit different in that it's a much more streamlined, simplified UI, very task-oriented just for trimming and cutting. And they say it's not just for video, but for audio as well. It's great for saving space by rough cutting your large video files. And that's exactly really what this is coming down to. Again, this isn't about final edits. This is about rough cutting things, getting it down to a manageable size that you can then bring in and use in a project. It's very, very fast because it's using FFmpeg and it's lossless operations on videos, which is nice because the original file isn't touched. It's available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. The latest version is 262, which was released late last year. It's installable on Linux as a snap package or also as an app image, and I'll be using the app image today. All right, so here I am in AVI DMUX. This is a sample video of a video I made last week, and it is 30, almost 38 minutes long, and I really only want to keep about 11 or 12 minutes of this. There's a whole center section where I went into a lot of detail that I had already covered in a stream 
that I had done previously and it just seemed redundant. And it, rather than making this really long video where I was really just trying to focus on the message of how to test and report bugs, not necessarily every single feature. So this is a great example of, of where I want to rough cut this to just get the pieces that I want. And those pieces are the very beginning and the very end. Now AVI Demux works by subtracting or removing the parts that you don't want. And then what you're left with is what you would save out as the edited file. And this differs from lossless cut where you're adding multiple sections or cuts that you can then choose to output as individual files or merge into one single file and output that. The reason why AVI Demux works the way it does is because it only has a single in and out marker and you have to take an action when you mark something, whereas in lossless cut, you can mark multiple sections and you'll be able to see the difference as I go through here. So in this case, I'm going to bump ahead a frame just to get rid of that recording part. I'll put my, oh, actually I need to go back, put my in, bump ahead, put my out, and I'm gonna delete that so that that little piece is gone. And in and out, you can either click the button or you can use the uh, keyboard controls that they're showing, control page up, control page down. So this is the part where I want the video to start, but again, I'm, I'm not marking this because I want this to remain. What I need to mark are the things I wanna delete. So I'm gonna go forward to about nine minutes here. Mm, yeah. About right there, set my in, come down to the end here, about, let's see, right there. And now you see with this bar, the rectangular bar that's drawn around there, if I hit delete, it didn't really appear to do very much other than the bar disappearing. But if you look down in the timeline now, it's 11 minutes instead of 37, 56. So this is the piece of the video that I want to keep. And you see now there's a transition between where I had ended the previous clip and this is the beginning of the next clip. And I'm just going to simply save this and just call it sample edit. And now you see that happened in one second, two seconds. It simply cut video out today, the parts, it, the parts system that I was looking to keep. There you go. It's something we're going to. All right. So let's see how that's different from lossless cut. Okay, so here we are in lossless cut, and right away you can see that it's very stark UI, many fewer controls, but what's here is exactly what you need. And again, this is very purpose-built as the developer states in their description, simply for cutting video and audio. As I mentioned, the difference between this and AVI Demux is that I'm going to select multiple sections, and then those selections are what I will output versus AVI Demux. Again, sorry to be repetitive, but just making sure that you understand the difference that that that's a subtractive process where you're left with what you want to keep. And this is an additive process where you're selecting what you want to output. So I'm going to bump forward a few frames here to get rid of that record window, set my endpoint with I, and then click over to that same part about nine minutes in, which where am I here? I don't have to be perfect. All right, let's say that's my out point. Now I want to add another clip. So I'm going to add cut segment and then I'll come to my end point. Let's say it's that hit my in and go all the way to the end, hit my out. But now you see it's, it's just a different selection process. <clears throat> so what I'm ending up with is the same video that I produced with AVI Demux, but again, I'm selecting the cuts. And from here, the interesting part about lossless cut is I can choose to save these as two individual clips if I wanted to, which might make sense for me, depending on the project I'm putting together, or I can merge them down into a single file and end up with a file like I did with AVI Demux. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and export them as individual files so you can see what that looks like. If I come back to my file manager, now you see that I have two cuts and this is obviously going to be the end one which is much shorter and then this is the beginning section if i look at those there you go change log and the other thing i can do here is turn on the merge function and then save this and now i will end up with a single file here and there you go there's a lot you can do with these tools and this really just demonstrates some of the basic usage but i wanted to make sure that people are aware of these because i don't really see them mentioned and i'm not sure that people do know that they're out there so i wanted to just spread some awareness and make sure people knew that they were there and i will link to the projects so that you can go out and take a look for yourself but like i said hopefully this just familiarizes you with something that maybe you didn't know about all right with that i think i'm done with this video questions and comments below like and subscribe if you do i really appreciate you watching and i will see you again soon have a great day everyone